We are finding out what it means to live in uncertain times here in the United States. Riots, looting, and civil unrest are what we see on the surface, while underneath, elected officials and appointed judges and courts undermine moral principles and create an environment where the innocent are made to pay for the crimes of the real perpetrators. On top of that, there is an attitude permeating our culture that some of us should bear the collective guilt of past generations, in direct contradiction to Christian principles that individuals bear responsibility for their own actions. Our world is turned upside down and there is reason to fear that it may get worse before it gets better. And there doesn't seem to be much that we can do about it. So what do we do when we encounter situations we can't control? Well, I will refer you to a number of general conference talks from April of this year that address that very topic. Each of those talks addresses ways we can face the serious challenges in our lives. I have listed the titles of some of those more pertinent talks in my notes below. If you are bothered by what's happening locally or more widely in our country, and you should be, you may find some comfort in rereading some of those presentations. However, I'm going to take this opportunity to give you a slightly different perspective. During my years in high school, the Vietnam War was building up. When I graduated from high school, the government was drafting a large number of young men to fill the ranks of the military. At the time, my inclination was to volunteer for military service where I would be assured of some technical training rather than wait and uh, be drafted and assigned to some outfit whose main purpose was to play with guns and explosives. Now, as attractive as that option sounded, I really preferred a different approach. So I volunteered and enlisted in the military to get training in a field of my interest. However, during my time in the military, I found out that it wasn't all fun and games like the military recruiter had promised. There were days in the desert, isolation at remote locations, and sometimes working, eating, and sleeping in conditions that were far less than ideal. But what was often the biggest challenge was working with people that could be extremely disagreeable. Many times during my enlistment, I would ask myself, why am I doing this? But of course, the answer always was, uh, well, you're doing this because you volunteered. But I also took consolation in knowing that I, it could have been worse. I could have been drafted along with all those folks who were playing with guns and explosives. Well, my point is this. The gospel we believe in strongly asserts that we have agency to choose our path in life. While God invites us to follow his path, we are not constrained to do so. Now, combining that with our knowledge that we lived with God before we came to this earth, I have come to the conclusion that we had our agency in our pre-mortal existence as well, and that we could choose at least some of the conditions in mortality that we thought would be best for our progress. Perhaps we chose our parents or siblings, perhaps we chose some of the health, financial, or interpersonal challenges that we would experience here during this mortal life. I don't just think that those experiences in this life are a random throw of the dice. I, I think it's more like choosing the thrill rides that you will go on before you ever get to the theme park. You know some of the rides will be wild and scary and others maybe not so much, but you really don't know how it feels until you get on those rides. But it's not the experiences of life that we are here for. It's what we can learn from them. It's not like a, a theme park ride in that we just go for the thrill of it. I believe that every challenge is meant to be a learning experience. True, sometimes that learning is delayed by a few days or maybe even a few years, but I believe that what I learn from them is an essential part of my premortal decision to accept the challenges of this earth life. For me, feeling that I had a part in choosing this path <clears throat> makes life's trials more of a challenge than an endurance test. And it gives me some perspective to keep asking, well, what am I supposed to learn from this? Of course, there are some very practical day-to-day -day approaches to these challenges that I try to adhere to. Many of those were mentioned in the April conference talks. It's things like uh, keeping up a routine of reading scriptures, daily prayer, and finding opportunities for service. But I also find that taking time for myself and 
focusing on my talents is helpful to relieving stress. For me, that means doing a lot of gardening, but for you it may mean developing a different talent or interest. The important thing is to maintain a routine of faithful, healthy living. One more thing I would emphasize, and that is staying attuned to the spirit. While some people may call it intuition, instinct, or gut feelings, I believe staying attuned to the spirit is critical for us to, to listen and to follow that inspiration. We can all too often get an impression to act, but discount those feelings as either irrational or silly. If you get an impression to take some action or other, I recommend that you really examine the options quickly and respond in a timely manner. In the days ahead, a quick response to the guiding inspiration of the Holy Spirit may bless us in untold ways. I know that God lives and wants us to progress here in this life. I believe that the trials of this life are chosen to help us progress and become more Christ-like. I challenge all of us to think about the uncertainties that we face and turn life's challenges into a learning experience, knowing that that knowledge and the atonement of Christ can bring us back into the presence of our Heavenly Father.